Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here at the Texas State Libertarian Party Convention. I'm here with my friend Clayton Hunt, a an especially audacious member of the Audacious Caucus, someone who is no stranger to stunt activism and getting people's attention. It's been awesome to see you at work here. Clayton is also running for state representative here for Texas State House. But first, what was the most fun thing you did here at the uh, Texas State Convention? So Friday night, uh, right before the gubernatorial uh, forum, uh, Bill Weld was kind of walking around, looking at all the tables, looking everywhere. I was standing over by the Corey Watkins table, love freedom innovation, of course. And um, kind of saw him coming, postured myself where he was going to be there. I said, hey, can I get a picture with you? Had my friend Desiree Lindsay, who's also on the Audacious Caucus, waiting for me. Uh, Tyler got some pictures. And JC, who's also another me Audacious member, because we kind of all just wrong neighborhood him. Uh, he was in the wrong neighborhood. Just had my Hillary Clinton for President 2016 flag. I, I just <laughs> took it out. Desiree took a picture, took some video and JC was making a face behind it. Um, and he asked after the picture was taken, who did I just endorse? And I was like, oh, don't worry. You've given her an endorsement before. For those of that you don't know, one of the biggest problems that people have with Bill Weld, aside from not yet being a philosophical libertarian, and I, I want to give him credit at least for coming in this direction. Maybe we'll see if he's able to complete the process. But uh, I, tr I trust him about as far as I can throw him. A lot of people do feel betrayed that he actually went and vouched for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Oh, wow. I saw that one coming. I wasn't, I, wasn't I wasn't fooled by him. <laughs> he signed a piece of paper saying he wouldn't back gun control. And then literally, as soon as he's got the nomination, he's like, well, a handgun is about a weapon of mass destruction. And the five shots uh, standard military rifle from 1900... I think so, that was so like. Do you, do you think he's an infiltrator, like deliberately put up by outside forces, or do you think he's just kind of confused and politician trying to come in and likes the LP more than Democrats and Republicans at this point? I think it's more of a opportunist. I think he sees a growth. I think he sees a chance of being relevant. I think he sees that there's energy and and a lot of upward movement, and I think he's trying to ride those coattails up. And he's trying to make it, make us, the coattails he's riding on, seem like we're riding on his coattails. When this man, before, honestly, before uh, 2016, I had no idea who he was. He's some Democrat, uh, sorry, Republican governor. Oh, uh, what's the difference? Yeah, yeah, Massachusetts. Yeah, um, and especially in, in Massachusetts, a Republican is like a Democrat anywhere else. Yeah, and re Democrats are here like Republicans everywhere up in, there too. In yeah. Massachusetts, the Democrats are like communists. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he's a two-term governor of a blue, red governor of a blue state from a time when I couldn't even, you know, read. So I, you know, he, I, he got elected in 92. I wasn't a twinkle in my daddy's eye that year. I don't know who the hell this guy is. He's a nobody. He's got connections, but he doesn't have any relevance now. And we gave him relevance. That's a thing. We're giving him relevance. And he's trying to say, look, I gave it to you. I gave you my name. But no one knew his name. No one cared. Well, I would take issue with one part of that is that it, the Libertarian nominating convention in 16 was flooded with Gary Johnson people. Who, so it's not us. It's, that we, it's not that we, as, as the base of the party, the legitimate philosophical libertarians, the principal libertarians, it's that we failed to secure the party. And that's something that's really exciting to see changed in 2018. We're a little over halfway through convention season and almost every single state convention uh, n delegate nominating process has been competitive. That's unheard of in Libertarian Party history. We are reinvigorating the party. And part of it is to keep people like Bill Weld off the ticket. And, and, I, and I think what, what you're doing is an important part of that. So I was actually a delegate in 2016. Uh, I remember we actually filled up our delegate spot, but no alternates. This time we had alternates. I'm not sure how many exactly in the end they ended up with, but having any alternates was something. Yeah. Um, really, it's... I do see that people are kind of pissed off about this. Uh, there's also a lot of just hyperbole going around the party. Every time everyone says something, it's, this is why the party's not winning. This this is why. And it's, and it's so... It's so hysterical at this point 
I, I see, you know, Nick Sarwark. We're not winning because we can't shut up about why we're not winning and wringing our hands about stupid shit. Like, Nick Sarwark didn't vote on Arvin, and it's like, that's why we're losing. Like, this is... Nobody cares. Nobody, Nobody else of the party cares. cares. Yeah. Like, with my thing with Nick is I... I don't like the way that he negotiated the Johnson Well contract. He had sole authority to negotiate the Johnson Well contract, and when it came to a vote before LNC, before it was like finally locked in, they were like, "Wait, what's this indefinite NDA that we we hear of?" And to see the contract, we had to sign this NDA, which includes a clause saying we can't ever talk bad about the campaign ever, ever. Well, hold on, we're 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 getting really inside a baseball here. But you had another fun thing that you were trying to get past here and they adjourned it, it, it if i was a little more conspiracy minded i might say in order to avoid letting clayton take the microphone what was your proposal that, that you were going to bring to the floor here so it was it was a proposal between uh that myself and my good friend jc uh put up and it was to put change the official font of lp texas to wingdings that i think that's where we win i think that's where we win see it, it is a unifying piece of legislation uh honestly also the fact it helps us with our senate race because our senate senatorial candidate is going up against a candidate who is well known for his love of cryptic symbolism from his use of it in the late 60s as as uh, the zodiac killer <laughs> do you want to explain that reference ted cruz is the zodiac killer <laughs> okay all right go ahead guys we here are presenting the best proposal ever signed by 35 delegates from LP Texas, that they stopped, they adjourned to keep us off the mic. We will not be silenced. They're afraid of this document. They're, they are afraid of this document. We have the documents. Hear that, Alex Jones? You hear that, you hack? We have the documents. Uh, not on the desk. Not on the desk. Right here. Right here. Right you here. can see it. And it is, says that, whereas Wingdings is the most inclusive font, objectively, anyone who truly values unity will co-sponsor this this motion to adopt Wingdings as the official font of LP Texas. So signed. So signed by 35 delegates. 35. 35. 35. Change in the world. One font at a time. One font at a time. And tell us about your race for the, uh, what are you running for and, and what are you doing with this campaign? I am doing, I'm running for Texas House District 145. Uh, I'm running against a long term de Democrat who hasn't had a challenge in the primary. Hasn't had a general election challenger for years. Uh, I am going all out libertarian. I'm not holding back because what I saw with Corey Watkins' campaign and putting out that unapologetic message, I saw a fire being lit. I I think we can do that again. And the fact is, my can't my opponent isn't even running for our race. She's already on some special election for a higher office. That's all she cares about. So it might end up being a vacated seat that you're the only one running for. Oh, she's, she's still going to be on the ballot. She's still going to try to put herself up there. But even if she gets nominated, even if she wins that, that race, and as soon as my state senator gets kicked up to Congress and she gets kicked up to state senate, they're going to have another special election again. Clayton Hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, brother. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.